In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw a yarn ball, or to be more precise, how to draw yarn and add texture to it. It might seem a bit tricky at first, but I'll break down the process step by step, making it easier to follow along. For my initial sketch, I usually use this pencil. It is much easier to work with and I can control my hand better. It allows for a lighter touch and better control, which is crucial for the initial design. Start by sketching a circle for your yarn design. However, don't aim for perfection. I prefer not to draw my circle too round and circular. A slightly oval shape adds a more natural feel. Remember this initial sketch should be light and faint, as you might need to erase and adjust it later. My circle ended up a little wider than intended, so I decided to enlarge it slightly to make it more proportionate. I consider it as an initial blueprint, a rough framework I'll refine further. After outlining the circle, I use an edge pencil to draw two lines inside the circle. The first line starts at the top and curves downwards, forming the initial yarn thread. I then continued adding threads in a similar manner, building the yarn structure. Okay, time to get those yarn threads going. Fill up that circle you drew with lines. Slowly and carefully continue adding threads, mimicking the way yarn intertwines. Remember, patience is key. Rushing the process can lead to unwanted results. Don't be afraid to let some threads disappear under the layers, creating a realistic effect. Yarn threads rarely maintain a uniform thickness. Some sections may appear thicker, while others will be thinner, adding visual interest and depth. However, strive to keep the overall proportion consistent. Avoid extreme variations in thickness, ensuring a harmonious balance. Don't be afraid to mess up. This whole thing is about playing around and seeing what works. Erase your stuff, change your mind, it's all part of the process. And about those little mistakes, they're actually awesome, I think. They give your yarn sketch personality and make it feel real. I like to draw a bunch of horizontal threads and then change things up a bit. Make them curve or go in different directions. That way it doesn't look too stiff or predictable. You know, in real yarn, things aren't always perfect. A thread might start somewhere then get cut off by another one. It's all about that natural messy look, so pull those threads in all kinds of directions to make your design feel more alive. To make things a bit easier, you can sketch out some basic lines and sections in your circle first. Then, when you add the yarn threads, it'll be like following a roadmap. This step takes time and a little patience, but trust me, it's worth it. Something really important about drawing yarn is that you want to plan the general direction of your threads from the beginning. So don't just randomly draw them everywhere. Start with a basic pattern or map of where you want those strings to go. This way your drawing will have a sense of flow and unity, even if it looks a bit messy and imperfect. And remember, the more you experiment, the more unique your yarn design will be. Instead of drawing every single strand, we can make things a bit quicker. Imagine you're drawing a whole bunch of threads together, then filling in those lines with yarn details. Draw some lines that overlap, then erase the ones that should be hidden underneath. This gives your drawing that cool depth and dimension, showing how the yarn layers are built. After you've got those overlapping lines, you can fill in any empty spaces with some parallel lines. But remember, yarn isn't perfect. So don't worry about making it too neat and titty. The initial shape you draw should be a bit random and irregular, like real yarn, to make it look more natural. Okay, now it's time for some shading. First decide where your light source is coming from. I'm thinking mine will be up at the top, kind of tilted to the left. That means the shadow will be cast down on the bottom of my yarn. Now it's time to make our yarn drawing really pop with some shading. Let's add some depth with shading. Considering my light source and the angle of the light, I'm going to start shading the darkest areas first, like down here on the bottom. I'm using an HP pencil, the same one I started with. That way I can adjust things later if I need to. It's all about keeping things light and easy at first. 
You can start shading wherever you like, but I like to start with the darkest spots. Even though it's not quite the bottom, it's still the darkest because of the way light bounces back from the surface in the lower areas. Be careful not to shade out your initial yarn lines. We want to keep them visible. In this second layer, I'm just going to add some hatches to show where the shadows are. I'm going to shade each yarn strand separately so that the shadows don't all blend together. You don't need to get too detailed with the shading on the lower layers of your yarn. Since less light hit those areas, that'll be darker anyway. Just shade them evenly and don't worry about getting every little detail in. So I'm going to shade those lower layers underneath the upper yarn strands with a consistent layer of graphite. Imagine you're shading a ball. You've got a line where the light stops hitting and that's your darkest part. We call this line terminator. Everything below that line is in the shadow family and everything above it is in the light family. On a ball or a sphere, the light gets softer as it moves from the terminator to the brightest part. The terminator is the darkest area and then it gradually gets lighter. The bottom of the ball might even be a little lighter because it's getting reflected light from the ground. Yarn is actually a sphere too. You can use the same shading technique for your yarn. Think about the light source and where the shadows would fall. Keep the transition smooth and you'll get a really nice effect. If this all feels a little overwhelming, check out the link above. It's a great tutorial that explains the basics of shading. Then you can come back to this video and finish your yarn drawing. Before we dive into the main shading part, let's talk about those individual yarn strands. Imagine each one of them as a little tube or cylinder. We need to shade them in a way that makes them look round, not flat. With a light source like this, when you're shading a cylinder, the middle part gets the most light and the edges are darker because they get less light. So when you shade your yarn strands, think about that. The edges should be darker and the middle should be lighter. Make sure the transition from dark to light is smooth, not sudden or sharp. Now let's get shading. We're going to shade each strand individually. It might seem like a lot of work, but it's worth it for a really realistic look. We'll start with an HB or edge pencil and create a general shadow. Don't worry about making it perfect yet. Just focus on getting the light and dark areas right. Pay attention to the direction of the light, where the light bounces back and how the yarn strands overlap. As you shade, darken the edges of the strands to make them stand out and prevent them from blending together. I'm going to finish this first layer of shading and then come back to add another layer with a darker pencil like a B or 2B. Now we're going to add a second layer with a darker pencil like a B or 2B. This will help to really define the shadows and create more depth.
For the next step, I'm going to use my B pencil to add some small curved lines along the threads. I'll fill each yarn thread separately, starting to add actual texture to the drawing. I'll use my B pencil for this stage because I want to create some defined lines in specific areas. After filling the shape with these curved lines, I'll go over my drawing once more to add depth to those textures with a lighter pencil. I'll grab my HP pencil for this. Here's a little tip for shading those threads. After drawing the curves, start by creating a general shading based on the light source. Then treat each curve as a separate plane, shading it based on the light's position and how it hits the shape. The twisting gaps between each curve will naturally be darker because less light reaches them. These areas are a bit deeper, so we'll make them darker. Don't make the strokes too dark on the edges. Focus on making the middle of the curves darker. Let the edges soften out. Darkening the edges creates an unnatural effect. We'll come back to the drawing after that to finish the texture. For the main yarn drawing, you don't need to spend too much time on every detail. Just add depth to some areas and leave others with less detail. This keeps the drawing natural, as in real life, we don't see all the details equally. Light allows us to see fine details, but in dimmer areas, we can't see those tiny characteristics as clearly. After finishing this stage, grab your 6B graphite pencil to add more contrast to your drawing. Make the shadows even darker and add depth to the threads hidden behind the top strands. You can also emphasize on the highlights and make them lighter using a neat eraser. Shade the cast shadow to give it dimension in a space. For the final step, double check your drawing and do any final touches. This guide is just a starting point. Feel free to experiment and do your own thing. Focus on the process, enjoy the creative flow, and you'll end up with something you love. Yarns can be found in various shapes and types, but with this guide, you can draw realistic yarn and add textures to make them feel natural. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and find it helpful for your texture drawing practice. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.